Folks from around the world, welcome to this video on volume presented by your humble host, Jeremy Alexander Newsom with reallifetrading.com. I hope you learn a lot from this video. My goal is to talk about volume on at least how I use it. There's a lot of other different variables, metrics, discussions, and opinions on volume. And I hope this video will clear up again, just at least how I personally perceive volume and how I use it for my trading. That doesn't mean it's the only way, but it does mean it is a right way because I do use volume very well to determine and interpret specific trades, setups, entries, exits, things like that. And strap in. Because as always, this video is entirely free. There is no sales pitch. You're welcome to watch the entire thing and watch as many times as you possibly can handle because it will be absolutely revolutionary. The very first thing I'm gonna do is dive in. Is I'm gonna talk about a particular trade that I placed earlier today based entirely on volume. And what I'm gonna do in order to do that is go back in time. So this is the E-minis which is the futures contracts for the S&P 500. Uh, why can't I go back? That's interesting. I've never actually tried to replay the emails before. All right, no big deal. I wanted to show you this. So let's talk about this. So I can't go back and, and totally remove all the candles, which is what I wanted to do, but that's, that's okay. So what we're gonna talk about is a lot of different volumes and a lot of different time frames. And if anyone has any questions, there's a lot of you here. We're actually in the morning day trading room right now, and we had a very profitable day. We're already done for the day. It's 11.42 a.m. Eastern, and so I figured, hey, let's just make a video and learn some stuff. So the video that I wanna talk about and the, the information I wanted to discuss is relative to volume. And what is it that I look for and what is it should we look for when we're taking some trades? This particular candle right here on the E-mini, so what I'll do again, I'm just gonna kind of bring the chart to the right a little bit. And when I bring the chart to the right, you'll see it really, the volume just totally changes. But this candle right here, let's talk about what's important about this candle and this volume. So this candle is one of my favorite candles. I'm gonna make a video on this particular candle at some point in the future anyway, but this is a high wave candle. High wave candle equals indecision, right? People don't really know what to do. They wanna do something, but they're not entirely sure what they want to do. So this candle has an upper shadow and has a lower shadow. The other interesting thing is if I'm ever trying to quote unquote pick a bottom, if I'm ever trying to get in as low as possible, what I really want to see is a new low that has been made. This doesn't just apply to futures, this also applies to stocks, and we're gonna be talking about that as well. It can also apply to commodities or even Forex. Here's the lower shadow. So this lower shadow tells me that people were very excited about shorting this particular breakdown. That's how that candle wick got formed. So it opens here, runs lower, everyone starts hopping in short, 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 and then boom, they get trapped. It runs all the way up and then sails off a little bit, but closes with a bullish candle with an upper and lower shadow and again, as I bring the chart over here, you'll see at the time, notice the massive volume bar. So for those who are here live in the class, type in a two, if you can see how much larger that volume is compared to all other volume. So all the way to the left, like this volume bar is much larger than every other volume. That tells me that there's a lot of people going long down here. I know that this candle, since it's a bullish candle, will automatically mean that this becomes a green volume bar. That's how it's set up. And most volume, is, most volume bars are set up that way. If the candle closes white, it's a green, well, if the candle closes bullish, it's a green volume bar, and if the candle closes red or bearish or black, it's a red candle volume bar. 
So I realized that this is a particular level of support. It made a new low, a lot of volume came in. And what we have to understand is it's not just buyers what's down there. This volume could also be people that were selling down here, right? They were initially shorting the, uh, the position. They were getting in short. They were looking to get out of the position profitably as well. So you have people who are already in short. When it makes a new low, they were exiting. So it doesn't have to be just buyers that come in and create this. In fact, most trades go higher based on demand. So the more people that demand a stock or whatever it is that you're trading at a price, the higher that price will go. That is just pure economics. Simple as that. So when you're looking at volume, what you're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is supply and demand. How many people are supplying the positions and how many people are demanding it? And this was an absolute monster trade on futures. Now, I dig it out way, way too early. Uh, exited right here. Sorry. Exit right here. But one of the things that's very important to keep an eye out and keep a reminder on folks is you will always exit too early. Remember that. On any trade ever, 99.999999% of the time, you're never gonna get out the top. The time that you do wanna hold though, relative to at least I didn't get out here, is because volume came into the trade. So look at that huge bullish volume spike. So massive, massive bullish volume. And the fun takeaway is all of this volume that came in during this time was all bullish. So that is a, without even looking at the candles, I can tell you that that's going to go higher and not short and do not short. So without even, I can take the candles off the screen and almost trade just purely based on volume. Let's try it out. Ready? So a bunch of bullish buyers came in, stock went up really nice, everyone's demanding it. A little bit of selling came in, right? Some type of rest, a little bit of a consolidation, boom, 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 some type of consolidation. Most likely we continued a little bit higher right here. But again, check out this very, very small bearish volume right there. And this volume, Notice how much extravagantly more that volume is than the rest of the volume. This is where I'm selling if I did not already get out. So if I see volume like that come in at the trend, this is probably very, very close to the top of the move today so far. This volume right here. Because that is, again, even though it's a green volume bar, that volume is comprised of so many people doing transactions at this particular price. So let's go check out and see how, cl how close that is to being accurate. So this particular candle volume right here coincides with this candle. And look at that. So far, that is the highest that we have moved presently on the E-minis. Isn't that cool? And you can tell, uh, again, just by looking at the volume, that, that was most likely the case. And as I mentioned right here, there was the pullback and there was the higher move based on this volume. And this volume right here is where I would have sold if I was not already in. Because when you get massive, massive bullish volume like that, that occurs after all of this volume that's already happened, that's people who are buying breakouts. That's the newbies who are getting in bullish who are like, oh, now it's confirmed bullish. Now I'm going to get in. And you have tons and tons of people buying the breakout and not only buying the breakout, but also selling the breakout to lock in profit. So this becomes a very important candle with all that volume. So now that's on the E-minis. Let's go look at the spiders. So this is the SPY. And let's talk about Again, the importance of a lot of this volume and what's really, really important 
just by looking at this particular chart right here. And I'll kind of extrapolate some of the volume. Now, what's really interesting is there's actually two or three really fun, cool little parts uh, of the volume here. First of all, you're always going to get massive volume at the end of the day. You're always going to get massive volume at the end of the day on the, on the SPY and most stocks. Most stocks are going to get tons and tons of volume right towards the end of the day because that's where everyone's you know, closing their position, locking in games, whatever. But that volume is in really useful because at the end of the day on the SPY right here, you have a huge bullish volume spike. So what do you think, boys and girls? Do or does that volume spike also represent people who are buying at the end of the day? What do you all think? Yes or no? The answer is yes, absolutely. So that candle totally represents tons of people getting in bullish at the end of the day. So when the next candle comes in, the very, very next candle, which is the market open, and it closes below the low of that massive bullish volume candle. Are people trapped, yes or no? And the answer is yes, absolutely. People are trapped. They are losing money because they got in. There's definitely, without question, people who bought right at the end of the day and the very next candle, boop, 8.30, market open, central, 9.30 Eastern. It closes below that huge bullish volume candle. Everyone is trapped. I'm looking at getting in bearish. So my entry bearish would have been get in at the low of that candle and my stop would have been above the high of that candle. And I based that decision off of two things, volume and the fact that it closed below that candle trapping people. And that would have been a pretty decent trade on the SPY. Right, so it closes below, it retests that low, trades down, makes a new low. You're probably taking a very small profit off the table there. It retests it again and then drops again, makes another new low. Again, you're probably taking a little bit of a position off there, retests again, and then there's probably your final one, two, three, four, five wave flush, and that's probably where you exit the position. Now, again, what's interesting to note is check out all of the volume that comes in on that candle. Tons of volume comes in on that candle. So let's flip the script. What do you think is going to happen for all of the people who shorted on that candle when the stock gets above the high of that candle? What do you all think is going to happen? Because remember, that candle. We can look at it and guarantee that a bunch of people shorted on that candle because it made a new low. People short all the time when a stock makes a new low. So when, it, when a stock makes a new low, I like to get out of a position, hopefully if I'm already in, if it, especially if it's after like a wave five structure of some kind. But everyone who shorted on this candle becomes trapped when the stock gets above the high of that candle. And if we zoom in really quick, let's zoom in really quick. Now I, I can do it this way. I, I know I can back trade this. So if we zoom in uh, onto the SPY and we take this candle and we kind of zoom in and really make these, because you can make these volume bars as big or as small as you want. I see so much from this chart already. The number one thing that I can see is, do you notice how this candle has a large amount of bearish volume relative to the volume that happens before? Do you all see that? So this candle has more bearish volume than the bullish volume of this candle. Do you all see that? So what that means is that's people playing the bearish S curve, expecting it to roll down. That's what that volume tells me because that bearish volume is more than the previous bullish volume. Now, here's something that I want all of you to take away from this particular video, and hopefully it's the most important part of the video. Most of everything that you've ever been taught about volume is probably wrong. 
as it relates to volume increasing on a breakout to confirm the move. Have you ever heard that before? Volume has to increase to confirm a breakout. No, 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 no. Volume has to get increased above the previous candle that is going to be trapping people. So this candle right here, the volume is lower than the bearish volume. But what happens? What happens is you took out the high of all of that bearish volume. So everyone who shorted on that candle is trapped. So since the volume is lower, I mean, how much, how much more volume could you have possibly wanted to come in? Would you want this candle? <laughs> Because if a huge volume candle like that comes in, that tells me something is actually up. That tells me to really be a little bit patient. Something's, something's strange. If you get a massive bullish volume breakout like this, and it goes above this candle, that actually tells me that it's gonna retrace most likely nice and far so that the market traps all the people who bought on that huge bullish volume breakout. When volume needs to quote unquote increase to confirm a breakout, it needs to increase over time, not necessarily the exact candle that does the breakout. So on this candle, even though this candle's volume is not higher than the previous bearish volume, this previous bearish traders are trapped because this bullish volume, this bullish candle closes above the bearish volume. So from this candle, I would now be looking for a bullish trade on SPY. From that candle on because all the bearish volume that came in right huge bearish volume here the natural rotation should have been like this if the bears were going to continue and since it did not and the bullish candle closed above the bearish candle that had more bearish volume all those bears are trapped and now i'm looking at going bullish and only bullish Type in a two if that's a little bit of an aha for those who are here live and for those who are here watching the recording, this is something that I do all of the time. Now, when I'm talking about volume increasing, does the volume increase as the stock goes higher, yes or no? And the answer is yes. Look at the volume increase. You have really nice volume in here and we make a higher high. So the stock makes a higher high and volume continually comes in nicely. So that now tells me that what's about to occur is we're going to most likely get a bullish S curve based on that new rotation. And when we get the bullish S curve, what is it that we're looking for? Volume. This volume tells me so much. This volume candle tells me that if we take out the low of these two candles, so this candle right here because it has a nice lower shadow, and this candle right here because it has a lot of bullish volume. If we take out the low of this candle, then the bears are either back to being in control or it's very sideways or I just don't wanna be in the trade anymore or whatever else the process is. But Notice how the volume on this candle is higher than the bearish volume. You guys all see that? So the bullish volume is greater than the bearish volume that preceded it, even though the candle is smaller. So already right here, I'm looking at going long. Based purely on the volume, most traders were going to go, all right, well, I like the volume. Let me wait for it to get in all the way up here, and then I'll get in bullish. Remember, folks, the best trade to get in are often the times the most uncomfortable. You want to buy as low as possible. 
if you're going to take a trade. As low as possible. So if you're waiting for a stock to go higher before you get into the trade, very frequently you could probably get in at a lower price because that's what you want to do is get in lower. Think about stocks like a house. If you have the choice of buying a house at $280,000 or $279,000, what are you going to buy that house at? Exactly, $279. Stocks are the same way. Buy them as cheap as possible. So at this particular point in time, what you could do most likely is you could just set up a limit buy halfway into this candle saying, okay, I'll buy it at 280.90 and you set your stop below here at whatever this is, 280.58 and it's below the lows of all these candles and what you can do eventually is take the stop and move the stop below the low of the most voluminous candle. That way, if the trade doesn't work, you end up losing very small. And that's the recipe for success. You'll see me do that all the time in the trading room because I'm looking for volume based on candles. So let's just see what this next candle does. I, I really have no idea. So this next candle, the low was 280.91. <laughs> which means what? I would have missed this by a penny. So what would I do now? So now I would look to get in, and again, I would look to get in on a pullback. But notice the volume, folks. Is the volume increasing, yes or no? The answer is yes, the volume is increasing. But what's very important to understand is the volume on this candle still is not higher than that candle right there. And for a lot of traders, they're gonna be like, well, I don't wanna get in yet because it's not getting, I mean, what are you talking about? How, we've already gone higher than that candle. <laughs> we've, everyone who's shorted on that candle is already trapped. So you have to wait for more volume to come in. Why? This volume right here was greater than this bearish volume right there. So everyone is already trapped. This trade's going, this trade's going long. There's, there's no reason not to be in this. So since I missed it by a penny, what I would do personally is take the trade, move it up halfway into that candle, and I'd probably just leave my stop right here. 280.59, so that way I'd have 40 cents of risk. And I would try to catch a pullback into this candle because, especially with the SPY, and we're going to look at other stocks in a second, don't worry. Um, the SPY retests very, very frequently. All right, so there's the retest on the SPY. Got it. The low was 280.98. Holler at your boy. Now, let's talk about the volume on this candle. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So what's interesting about the volume on this candle that just came in? Who can tell me? I'm just gonna sit here and wait. You guys type it into the chat pane. What's interesting about the volume that comes in on this candle? Bow, bow, bow. Sylvan and Tim both have an answer. Sylvan says it's lower than the previous volume. That is correct. It is lower. So if you wanted to go bullish, is that so if you're in bullish, is that a good thing? Yeah, that is. It's a good thing because you've all already seen my video on S curves. And again, that's still one of my favorite videos of all time. But what just happened is a minor s curve this is an s curve on a one minute chart that just came in this is a five minute chart that we're trading so this is a minor fractal s curve on a one minute chart so now what i can be very confident of is if the stock takes out this bearish volume we're going to continue and if at any particular point in time it closes above this bearish volume we're definitely going to continue So now all I would be doing is asking this stock to close above 281.14. I'm going to draw a line 
And we're going to keep going like step by step and just, you know, determine and, and dictate what would most likely happen on this trade. So next candle comes in another bearish candle, but look at the volume, even less volume than the previous candle. So this is again, another S curve, but now it's a different fractal. So instead of a one minute chart, this is probably a two minute or three minute S curve. And it's kind of an S curve on a five minute as well. But the volume is declining. That's gonna keep me in this trade, bullish. Because as most of you all know, anytime you get a continuation pattern, anytime you get an S curve, anytime you get a stair step or flag or whatever you wanna call this little rotation right here, whatever you wanna call this, Volume normally declines. Volume normally declines in that area. So if volume really starts picking up, then you can be worried. Otherwise, if the volume is declining during that little ro rotation, then you stay in. All right, so next candle comes in, another lower shadow, but what's most important here? What just happened, folks? Volume says, hey, bro, I'm here to party. Who's here to party with me? <laughs> now, what's really interesting about this particular volume is for me, at this point, I have a mental stop below the low of this candle. I still have a hard stop exactly where I told you all it was, 280.59, so my hard stop is still down there. But now I have a mental stop below this candle because if we break the low of that increasing bullish volume, I mean, that is as much volume as you could possibly ask for. And note, we still have not gone above the high of this candle, but volume is increasing. So again, you should already be in the trade bullish based on volume. There's no need to be waiting for it to go higher because the volume has already confirmed. Ever since this candle, the volume has been confirming the entire move. Because again, during this rotation, this little S curve right here, look at the volume. Volume just really just tanked. All right, so I got my mental stop in place. Um, I mean, how is that not an increase in volume? I mean, again, if you're, you should be, I mean, you should already be in the trade, but if you're not in the trade, you definitely have to be in the trade now. And then there you go. There's the pop. And again, really, really huge volume, massive, massive move. And if you took this trade on the spy, obviously that was over. Uh, that's like a two, three R trade. I mean, I probably just take the position off right there. Most likely. Now what's really cool is from here, I can do 85% of my analysis based off of ready for this, this candle. I can do 80% of my analysis based on this candle right here. This is a massive bullish candle, huge volume. So when we went through today's trade, so check this out. This is really, really cool stuff. I just love this so much. You had that really big little pop. Okay, we ended up coming back down. So we we're rolling over. Look at this volume. Before the close of market yesterday, what does that volume tell you? Most people are, at the end of the day are doing what? getting in bearish, selling the stock short, selling their positions, right? Because you have this huge, huge bearish volume bar. So when it gaps down the next day, what is everyone doing?
when it gaps down the next morning, all those people who shorted are buying to cover their position. They are taking a profit. And not only that, but they're buying at the exact same spot that they bought yesterday. And when we regain this bullish volume right here, when we get back above that price, is Bull City once again. And the most intriguing part is most traders would be afraid to take this position because none of the volume over here was more than the bearish volume. Remember folks, that's not the point because the, the, you're always going to have more volume, right? Then you're going to have it the previous day, right before it occurs. Same thing with all trades. I mean, the very, very first candle of open, on a gap or something is gonna have more volume than all of your other candles. So it's the volume that comes after those candles that's most important. So when we regain the, the area where all that volume came in, that should have been your spot where you go, okay, once you're above here, we should not do this. Sorry, let me rephrase. We, we should easily or could easily do this, but we should not close below this candle or this candle today because it recaptured the massive bullish volume from this candle, it recaptured that support. So once you're above there, there's no need to be bearish at any point in time during the day, at all, all day long. Unless it closes below this candle or this candle, there's no need to be bearish all day. Now that doesn't mean that, I, I get it, that we had a pretty bullish day today in the market, but that doesn't mean that you know, you're just, holding uh and not looking at for a bearish trade what i'm saying is let's say this happened right that means that you're going bullish right here rather than shorting does that make sense now this is where i, I disagree with a lot of other traders and a lot of other analysts out there i normally do stick to one position all day and say this is how i'm going to take this trade i'm looking for this trade i'm looking for bullish on this position or I'm looking for bearish on this position. And sure, I miss trades like that all the time. But what I can guarantee you is if, especially as a newer trader, if you always flip flop back and forth, you're gonna have a much lower chance of being correct than if you just stick to a position. For example, let's say you try going bullish on SPY four times in a row. And the other flip side is you went bullish, bearish, bearish, bullish. So four different outcomes. Could you have lost on all four of those? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely. Now, if you went bullish on the SPY four times in a row, could you have lost on all four of those? And the answer is still yes. But mathematically, you have a better shot at getting one of these correct. <laughs> That's the thing. You have a better shot at getting one of those correct if you stick to it rather than continuously flip back and forth. That's just, that's just math theory. So oftentimes when you see traders get whipsawed in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out of positions, it's because they'll go bearish here and then they'll go bullish here and then they'll go bearish here, and then they'll go bearish here. And they'll end up losing on three out of those four trades and have a very, very small winner up here when they, you know, or sorry, they have a very small winner right here where they went bearish. When in reality, if you went bullish here, you made money. If you went bullish here, you lost money. If you went bullish here, you lost money. And if you went bullish here, you made money. So going bullish four times on SPY you would have made two times as much money as going is trying to pick every single different direction. Does that make sense, team? And again, that's just on the spy. That doesn't mean that it can't be done on any other particular trade, but that's that's just the specific uh, specifically on the spy. So let's go look at the trades that we took today on a day trade and break the volume down, and then we will also discuss. Um, some swing trades and things like that. 
So we're going to go back in time. So this was the trade that we took on Canadian Solar this morning. And I, mean, I think I can go one more candle. Well, before I even do, before I even go bullish, or sorry, go one more candle on Canadian Solar, the volume, the most recent volume, is it bullish or bearish, ladies and gentlemen? The most recent volume is bullish. Yep. Yet this huge bullish volume spike. Relative to the previous three days in a row, you have more bullish volume. And then over here, you have three bullish, strong bullish days in a row. The reason I say strong is because those three days of volume are more than all of the volume over here. Same thing over here. You have four huge days of volume. Over here, huge bullish volume. Over here, huge bullish volume. And the reason I'm saying huge, it's huge relatively. Because the very next day, what happened? You have less volume. You have less volume. So the next day that came in, you had less bearish volume than you had the, on the bullish volume. Same thing with this candle. You have less bearish volume. So realistically, ever since this candle right here, all of this is bullish. All of these days, there's more bullish volume here than bearish volume in my opinion. Not even in my opinion, I mean, just looking at it, there's more bullish than bearish. Starting from this day right here. So the very next day that comes in, so I, I, again, like I, did, I figured that that might happen. That's okay, we'll just do this. The very next day that comes in, what does the volume do? Another huge volume day. And again, I say huge relative because that is the biggest volume day on Canadian solar since the 22nd of February. And look at the difference in the size of the candle. That was the 22nd of February, and that was yesterday. So look at the amount of volume on that, just the candle. I'm not even looking at the candles, guys. I'm looking at the volume right now. With my eyes, I am purely at the bottom of the screen. I'm not even looking at the candle. I'm looking at this volume. Look how much more that volume is compared to all these other candles. It's huge. So what does that mean? You, you all tell me, what does that volume mean? Because I forgot. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> I don't remember. What does that volume mean? Donna says, means it's going up. Possible. Means something a little bit different though. It's a great guess. It's a great guess. It means that there are tons of people who expect it to go up. You have a lot of demand. You had a lot of people buying the stock. A lot of people. Tons of people buying it. So when we get a gap down the next day into here, how many people are trapped? And the answer is all of them. Everyone from the 22nd of February. So these, these are the three most important candles. Is this candle, this candle, and this candle. Those are the three most important candles that I'm looking at when I'm analyzing the gap on Canadian Solar this morning. And we crushed this trade. This was a great trade. Straight up crushed it. But it was all based on those three candles and the fact that we're gapping down below all those people. We're trapping everyone. We can look at the volume and immediately tell you have a whole bunch of people trapped. So when this candle comes in, oh boy, I mean, come on. So now what I'll do is I'll zoom into a three minute chart and um, we'll talk about some of this volume. 
So here's what's really, really cool is the very first candle always has the most volume. We get that. But what's interesting about the very first, again, this is a three minute chart. The very first three minute chart, what's interesting about that candle is it closes below the low of this candle, this candle. I mean, shoot, it closed below all of the pre market support. So we close below that support and look at the very weak, measly volume that came in on the previous can on the next candle. And the very next candle that comes in, what happens? Volume increase for the bears. So that's a good thing. That means that's like, okay, great. I'm excited. I want to get in bearish. So the next candle that comes in is another bullish candle, but relative to the previous volume, what do we have? Relative to the previous volume, we have less volume. This candle comes in, nice upper shadow. This candle comes in, and that's where we exited the trade. Tons of bearish volume, and that's why I got out there is because that was the most volume for the day. That was a big breakdown. And yes, I got out, we got out early because that was a one, two, three, four, five. That was the wave structure. So I exit on the wave three. I didn't hold through the wave four. And that's absolutely okay. Now, what's really cool is, ready for this? Is there any volume on this chart that could have helped us to get out if we weren't already out? If we were not already out, is there any volume on this chart that you can see that would say, hey, bro, or hey, girl? I want to be eggs in your old positions right here. Look at that volume. Oh, my goodness. That's massive. That one volume bar is more than the five previous bars. And it's an easy one, two, three, four, five wave count. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, that's the easiest wave count. That's like a that's textbook. Textbook. So when this candle comes in at the end of a wave five, I don't mean that you have to go long. I mean, you could if you wanted to. It would have worked. You could have made some long money down here. And I'll show you how I would, how I would trade that. I'll zoom in in just a second. But that also means that if you are in bullish and you see that candle, you could just exit and just take the profit wherever you're at. What if you're like, well, Newsom, I'm only up 1.1 Rs. Great. If you have a wave five count and you see massive volume like that come in and you're up more than an R, just take the gain. Why not? I'm not going to get mad at you. You will always leave money on the table. Remember that. Always. The stock could have done this. It could have gone to $12 a share. But if you make some money on the trade, that's all that matters. The target and the profit taking are, is oftentimes the least most important part of a trade. The most important part is the risk. So let me show you how I would have faded this if I would have. I didn't, but you know, this, this trade is still ongoing right now. Let me talk about how I would have faded this trade because this is very important as well. Very, very big takeaway. So we have huge volume down here, right? A lot of people are buying. But what's the big takeaway is where were they buying? A lot of people were buying down here as well. Right, because remember the stock tra opened, trade all the way down. People started getting in bearish, right? That's where all the newbies got in bearish is right there. And then all the newbies get in bearish and then all the people like us who are already in short start buying to cover. And as we start buying to cover, other people start buying as well and it starts to go up. And so this trade, this candle goes from 1925 to 1942. That's 20 cents of buying already. Which means what? That means that this candle is a shaved top candle. Okay, that's cool and all, Jeremy. What does that mean? That means that my entry would have been a limit buy right here at the high of that candle. So instead of getting in somewhere on this candle, 
I know since this is a shave top candle and you already had tons of people buying, how do I know we had tons of people buying? Uh, hello, the volume. So you had all those people already profitable. Do you think that those people who bought right here are already gonna sell right there? And the answer is yes. So they're, they're already buying down here at 1928, so they're gonna sell at 1955. I mean, that's 30 cents. On 1,000 shares, that's $300 in like six minutes. <laughs> okay? So when this retest comes in, 1942 would have been my entry because of the shaved top candle. Shaved top candle means you already have tons of people who are already profitable, so that's gonna cause the S curve, and that would have been the spot to buy. A lot of people play these hammer S, uh, shave top hammers way too aggressive. Sorry, well, is it too aggressive or not aggressive enough? They're getting in up here, right? They see this hammer candle, they start fumbling with the buttons and they're, they're buying right up there with a stop down there. Now that trade still would have worked, not the worst trade ever. Still would have made money, but if I can help you save 10 cents a thousand times, you'll thank me later. And that's why you see me in the trading room miss trades all the time by a penny, right? Or, or, or three or four cents. I'm the king of missing a trade by three or four cents because I'm really, really dialed in on these candles. I can, I can read a candle like I'm reading a book. And that is, that's a, that's a beautiful trade right there. All right. So now let's go look at the other one that we traded and talk about the volume on this thing. All right, so give me, uh, let me just hide all the drawings here for a second. All right, so I'm gonna hide all the drawings. So this is guess, it was down, huge, okay, 15%, it's a dividend paying stock, blue chip fade. So first candle comes in is bearish. Second candle comes in, bearish, huge volume. Okay, cool. Why is that important? Because what happens on the fourth candle? What happens on the fourth candle? Fourth candle closes above the biggest bearish volume bar on your screen. That is a big deal. <laughs> big deal. Now the thing is, a lot of you will go, well, Jeremy, it's not doing it on big volume. Remember, that's the point of this particular class. The volume doesn't have to increase on that candle because all the people who are shorted are trapped. They're already losing. So you don't have to get a volume bar like, right, like this. To go, oh, okay, now, now I'm going to get in bullish because, you know, the volume is confirming. People, the perma bears, type in a seven if this is true. All the perma bears that you get an email from, because you get other emails from other people, they're like, this volume in the market's not confirming, so I'm, I'm not trusting it. It's like, bro, are you <laughs> Volume, the bears got trapped forever ago. Volume confirming, what are you talking about? Once the bears get trapped, the volume doesn't need to confirm jack squat. Once the once bears get trapped, they're gonna have to buy to cover at some point. So it doesn't the volume doesn't have to come in for it to go higher. That's the biggest misconception of all time with trading volume. Volume does not have to be massive in order for the stock to go up. You just simply have to have more demand. Okay. And more demand can come from bears or bulls getting trapped on a trade. So once this candle comes in, even though it's less volume and it closes above this candle, as soon as that happened, I go, all right, we're going to fade guess today. This is going to happen. So you might say, well, Newsom, why did it retest? Because it just moved 45 cents. What are you talking about? Why did it retest? It went from... 1832 to 1892 that's 60 cents on a thousand shares that's six hundred dollars in seven and a half minutes what are you talking about why did it retest <laughs> that's why 
because it moved massive. That's a huge move on anything. So you get that natural S curve, boom, and then bam, nice little nice S curve. And then as soon as that S curve comes in, here's a really big takeaway. What happens with the bearish candle, ladies and gentlemen? This is a big, I want to know, if you guys get this, I know you had a big takeaway from class, and I'm really excited to see how this will transpire, inspire, transform the trading. What's the big takeaway from this bearish candle? Vinman is 93% accurate. Tim is 94.5% accurate. So if I was asking for like telepathy, um, I can never say that word, for you guys to read my mind, this candle volume was lower than both bullish volumes. That's what I was, that's the mind reading I was trying to do. So it's lower than the bullish volume. That is a big deal. So since it's lower than the bullish volume, that means technically that the volume increase on the breakout. So therefore be looking to go long. So when this candle comes in, all right, bullish candle has less bullish volume. So it's like, okay, you know, it's kind of cool, whatever. Volume's not that great. Again, volume's not that great. Volume's not that great, but check it out. Check, check, check it out. When this candle comes in, same exact thing. The bear volume is still less than the previous bullish volume. Type in a two if your brain's feeling all fuzzy right now. I want to see a lot of twos because that is cool stuff. Because this is how I decided to take this trade. <laughs> this morning, this is how we decided to get in is the bearish volume was less than the bullish volume when that happened. I was like, oh man, the bulls are strong at this point. So when this candle comes in, what more do you possibly want? Look at all that volume. You now get all of the bullish volume. That bullish volume is more than every bearish volume candle on the screen except for the first two. And that doesn't really count because of the first two. They're always going to be the most, right? Your, your very first candle and, you know, usually second candle is always going to be the most volume. That just goes without saying. So that's why after that candle came in, we got in uh, here. Sorry. That's why I was um, kind of talking about I should have gotten in like 1879 pretty much based on this bearish candle right here and the high of this candle right here. I feel like I could have gotten into 1879. So we got into 1881. Um, this is the, the green, this green line's our entry. So we got into 1881. I, I'm still kicking myself because I actually do think I could have gotten it for 1879. I got two pennies lower based on just this candle, like the high and the opening of this candle. So we got into 1880. It retested, um, it made a new high where I should have exited 10%. Retest, so we held through the retest. Why did we hold through the retest? Bullish, 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 no volume. No volume whatsoever, so I ain't scared. I was a little scared. And then tweezer bottom comes in right here. Volume looks good. And then, you know, trades up. And again, we exit 10% uh, right here and, you know, I mean, it was a winning trade. It was a profitable trade. So profitable trade entirely based on, well, really volume and, so it was intraday volume plus look at the volume from yesterday, the last two candles. Last two candles had what type of volume? Massive bearish volume. Exactly. Massive bearish volume. So you have massive bearish volume. Those traders are doing what at market open? They're buying to cover. Exactly, they're exiting their position by buying. And that's gonna create demand.
Any questions so far? So this is the daily chart that we're still on. Let me go show you something else that's really cool. And again, this, uh, so that everyone knows, I didn't take this trade, okay? So I didn't take this trade. Uh, so this is just pure hindsight. But this is a really, really good volume example where too many people really, really mess this whole volume thing up. So this huge amount of volume, huge candle comes in, right? I have traders all the time, not necessarily you, I'm just saying like, not, not you real life traders, I'm, just, I'm talking about like people on Twitter and stock twits and uh, just, you know, emails and just general people. So with this candle, I have people tell me all the time that they're gonna wait to get in bullish above that candle. Type in a seven if you've heard that before from somewhere else on the internet. Now, <laughs> I'm thinking, you're, you're gonna wait to get in above that candle. That's like 34 points away. I mean, what? You're gonna get in there? You're going to get in bullish, but you're going to wait to get in above the high of that candle. Uh, okay. Sure. So here's, here's how I would have preferred to do it. Now, again, did not take this trade. You all know I'm very real, very honest about everything that I trade. I make good trades. I make bad trades, but, you know, it all happens. What's very interesting is this candle, there's nothing really spe special about that candle volume, but it is a hammer, so I'm automatically interested. Number one. Number two, I'm looking at the left, and I'm noticing something that's specific. I'm noticing a lot of volume with a big bearish candle at approximately the exact same price that we're at now. And what did it do last time? It bounced. Mm, cool. So let's see if it can do it again. Now, where would I have gotten in bullish? That's what we need to figure out. Okay, so this candle, I mean, it's a cool candle. I like the hammer. I like this. I like this. So what we're experiencing right now is we're experiencing the S-curve. Boom, 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 right? That's the bearish S-curve. My question to you is who is shorting? on that bearish candle. When if you look at this candle, look at all that volume. We're talking millions of shares have already been traded short. Who is shorting now? Noobs. <laughs> Tim says me a few months ago. Yeah, the thing is, I'm looking at buying after that candle comes in because the short was up here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this thing moved $3. Guys, $3 on a $20 stock is massive. So this thing went from $22.50 to $18.50 in a day? In a day! That's huge! $3. Man, that is 10 for 11% in a day. So when this candle comes in, what we're going to notice is something very important. That volume does not go higher than this volume or this volume. So the very next day, when this candle closes above the bearish candle, I know and I realize that the volume is not greater than the bearish volume. But in this video, you now know that that doesn't matter because the bears are trapped. So that's when you're getting in long, on the close of that candle. And your stop is down here, somewhere, somewhere around here. Now, if you don't get in there, on the gap up the very next day, white candle gapping up, that's a retest gap, you definitely gotta be playing that thing long. In fact, let's go back trade that really quick. What day is that? February 5th on a three minute chart. February 5th on a three minute. 
starts back up real quick. Okay. Ron. All right, we can look at BIIB next. Uh, what the heck is this arrow thing? Do you guys see that arrow thing? Or was that just me? I had no idea what that was. All right. Um, okay, so this is, sorry, I, I pressed the buttons a little bit too far. So this is the gap up of that day. This is the gap up. Now, check it out. Right before the close of market, you had what kind of volume? What kind of candles? Buying candles with good volume. So what are they doing at market open? They're gonna sell, locking in profit. That's the retest. So here's the trade down. This is the pullback. So for me, I'm taking into, into account this volume based on this candle. And this bearish candle that I'm looking at has no volume relative to the previous bullish days. So I'm not afraid to go along there. If this candle had massive bearish volume, I would definitely wait. No question. If this candle had more bearish volume than these previous bullish candles, I would wait. But since this candle has an upper shadow, see that little upper shadow? I like that upper shadow because that means that there are some people going short at the end of the day, or not the end of that candle. There's some people shorting at the end of that candle. There's some people selling to lock in profit. So it creates that nice little upper shadow. And this is a very important little tactic as well. So when I drew this entry, all right, the entry I'm drawing is 1987, which is one penny above the high. And the stop that I drew was 1968. But you all have seen me do this over the last two years, a million and a half times. What am I going to do with my stop? Very frequently, if I can, I'm going to make it an uh, even number so that I can just calculate the shares a little bit faster. So instead of making it 1968, I'm going to lower it to 1967 and make it an easy, even 20 cents, which is 2,500 shares on a $500 R. Okay. So that's just something that I'll do. You don't have to do that, but I'll make it an easy, like an even 20 cents because I know how to do that math. I mean, that's just, you, you sometimes you practice it. 20 cents on 100 shares is $500. 20 cents on 500 shares is $25,000. 20 cents on 1,000 shares is $5,000. So whatever your 20, I mean, that, that's just what I would do. I'm just randomly bringing that up. Okay, I'm moving on. So next candle, I'm setting this up. This, is, this order is ready to go. Now, many of you would say, all right, well, Newsom, this bearish candle resistance is right there. So why are you getting in there? Because the risk reward sucks to that, that trade. I agree. Risk reward is not that great to that trade. But the trend on the daily chart already tells me that we're bullish. So here's a fact about bullish trends. You guys ready for this? Fact about bullish trends. Hope this helps a lot of you with your trading. They are supposed to make higher highs. <laughs> it's supposed to happen. So for me, if I'm going to take this trade, I'm going to get in on this trade. And if it doesn't make a new high, then I'll do something. Then I can worry or move my stop or exit early or whatever. But it's supposed to go higher because it's a bullish trend. So I'm not gonna let a resistance, a measly little resistance, just say, oh, well, there's no need to get into this trade now because of this resistance right there. It's supposed to go higher. If you're in a bullish trend, it's, a, it's supposed to go up. Now, if it doesn't, we can adjust, right? We can change, we can fluctuate. Oh, shoot. I love this even more. Why do I love this? Let me kind of zoom in for a second. Uh, give me three seconds. So again, remember, I did not take this trade. This is all in hindsight. Uh, um, I know it's a little bit hard to see, but do you, can you guys type in a two if you can see how that volume increased? You see how that volume increased on that candle relative to the other candle? Okay. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but you know, it's there. 
Number two, what's this candle pattern also called? Marianne, got it, it's a wicked pair. Wicked pair, which I have a video on that, just on those, because they're really cool. Uh, that's my name for them. Wicked pair, and it's an inside candle, so the pressure is building, I like this trade even more. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm in, without question, I'm absolutely in. Now, the volume, we can see the volume increased again. So volume increased again, I like this trade, but there is one problem, that pesky little resistance, right? We did not get above that resistance yet. So now, what I'm gonna do on this trade is I start telling the stock, okay, you need to close above the high of these candles. And ladies and gentlemen, what do I do if a stock does exactly what I ask it to do, which is a rare event? What do I do? Hold longer. <laughs> That's the time that you hold the trade. That's it. Don't get out early. If it's doing what you actually want it to do, guys, that never happens, right? <laughs> I mean, for a stock to actually do what you want it to do is like the most rare thing of all time. So if it actually does it, the one time of a month that it does it, you might as well hold. Now, of course, what if you hold this trade and this one trade that you hold goes against you, right? Does that and does this. Okay, cool. Is that gonna happen, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, it will. Guaranteed, 100% chance of it happening at some point in your trading career. So don't worry about it. Since it will happen, that, that is gospel, okay? It will happen. So when it does, go, all right, cool, that was fun. Because it will. But what about the time that it doesn't? What about the time that it does this? You want to be in. Okay? So I'm going to tell this stock, all right, we've been in the, you know, the trade market's been open 12 minutes. I need to close above the pre-market high, above the, this high before 9 o'clock central. So I do nothing between now and 9 o'clock. Absolutely jack squat. Nothing at all. Nine o'clock, there's my blue line. I'm doing absolutely nothing. So until then, I'm just sitting back. Did it close above the highs, yes or no? No, it did not. So I'm still waiting. Next candle, did it close above the highs? Yes, it did. Okay, so now I go, all right, well, great. I hope this trade works because it, it did what I asked it to do before nine o'clock. So now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a target, uh, 40 cents is my target. 40 cents, okay. And I'm just gonna do my absolute best to hold this trade. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do my best to hold this little cookie. Two R's is 20.27, and then I'm just gonna start trailing my stop because it did what I asked it to do, volume looks great. Uh, next candle, next candle, next candle, next candle. So now I'm just waiting, I'm not doing anything. So there's nine o'clock, market's been open 30 whole minutes. Um, volume still looks okay, I don't really see any issues, so I'm waiting waiting now this candle new high volume increase this is the candle based on that volume that i either move my stop or lock in some profit because the market's been open 35 minutes and this will come down to a lot of different factors how well you're doing for the month um how well you're doing for the day whatever whatever all of those different factors do they do matter I'll give you an example. I know this is a long video already, guys. I'm sorry if it's, if it's boring. Um, let's say, for example, this was the fifth of the month, so we're early. Let's say that on the month, all the way through, you're down 0.63 Rs. So let's say 
the fifth of mo- uh, the fifth of the month, you're down 0. 0.63 R's, and right now you have an R on the table. What do you do? What would you do in this situation? I can tell you what I would do. I'm taking the full R. I'm taking the R, and I'm not trading for the rest of the day. That's what I would do. If I was in this exact situation, if I was down 0.63 R's for the month, it was the fifth of the month, I'm in this trade, I'm up an R, I take the full R, now I have about 0.4 R's of profit, and the next day, which is the 6th of March, the very next day, whatever trade I take, I'm going to do my absolute best to make sure I can lose less than 0.4. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? So the next day, I'd have a 0.4-hour gain. I'll do my absolute best to lose less than 0.4 on that trade. Now, that doesn't mean – a lot of people mistake that to mean that I set a really, really, really tight entry, you know, like very, very tight. It's the exact opposite. I set a very loose entry so that that way I can end up increasing the stop or whatever so that I can't lose you know, more than that trade. All right, so I would, you know, if we're you're up an R right here, we exit the whole R, or you can increase the stop. If um, you want to increase the stop, this is where I would put it now is below the low of this hammer. That's where my stop would go uh, if I was trailing the stop. I know some people want to practice stop trailing as well, so mm-hmm. I'd still hold, I'd still hold, I'd still hold, I would still hold, I'd still hold. All right, so now that hammer, I would take the stop, I'd put it below the low of that hammer. If I was trailing the stop, still hold, all right, and I got trailed out. Now what's cool is if I did that, well, let's just go all the way to the end of the day. All right, so this is the end of the day. Think about it, right? Remember, this was a bullish retest gap. You guys remember that? Most bullish retest gaps, you get one really nice S-curve for the day. Boom, 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 that was it. So me exiting here would have been the exact same result as me getting trailed out here anyway. Makes sense. Any questions so far? Angela said, it took me two years of trading in this classroom to learn and use trade management. Now it's crucial to all my trades. I love it. Trade management is key. So before we dive into that, my boy Ron said, hey, let's go look at BIIB and kind of analyze that uh, that volume. So this morning when I looked at BIIB, um, I mentioned that it probably could continue a little bit lower because it's just, it's really gapping into no man's land. It's down 27%. You do have three previous days worth of selling. You also have this really nice volume spike right there, bullish volume spike. And that's the reason that I said this morning, we could probably go a little bit lower. Based purely on that volume spike and and also the fact that we're, you know, trapping every single human that bought in there. I was like, yeah, I think this is going to go a little bit lower. So what's happening today is you're getting tons of people who are shorting the breakouts, algorithms, robots, manual people, so on and so forth. And you also have people who are buying the stock down here because it's so low. So for me, if we end the day with a volume bar like this, huge, huge bearish volume, and tomorrow we close above the high with less bullish volume, which will happen, am I going to be bullish, yes or no? Yep, I would be bullish because all those bears would be trapped. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, but it very well could. So if I zoom into a five-minute chart, what's very interesting about the five-minute chart is the very first candle that came in, big bullish candle, huge bullish volume. Now, that's always going to happen, right? The very first candle is always going to be the biggest, so that's, that just kind of goes without saying. And the whole time we were looking at BIIB, you can see that it was, you know, we're making lower highs right here. 
We never closed above the high of any bearish candles. Not one. Except for this one. This one doesn't really count. I mean, if you're going to fade it, you could have you could have faded BIIB here, stop here, and gotten an R. I mean, you could have scalped that. But other than closing above this candle, we never really closed above the high. We didn't close above the high of this candle. We didn't close above the high of this candle. We didn't close above the high of this candle. We didn't take out any bearish candles. We didn't take out any bearish volume really at any particular point in time other than this guy. And that would have been the only trade that you could have made bullish on BIIB. I mean, no, let, me, let me rephrase, not the only one, but you could have also, if you were brave, had a order right here at the low of the day as a support. Just buy blind down there with a stop right there, somewhere like that. And then that could have worked out for, that would have been a good two and a half hour trade. Would have taken some stones to do that, but I can understand why someone would. Easily I can understand why someone would have taken that trade. So if we zoom into like a three minute chart, same thing, right? Three minute chart, you just never get a close above any of those bearish candles, like I said, except for right here. And that's a wonderful example because you get this very small bearish volume that is less than this bullish volume and then it closes above the high of that bearish volume. So yeah, if you're gonna go bullish, that would pretty much been the only trade to take. And then again, it just trade into this resistance and just rolled over. It never, it never got a close or any kind of break above any real candles. So that's why I never faded BIIB this morning. Um, let's go look at the fade that we did yesterday on SCS and talk about this volume. So this volume um, didn't really do anything spectacular. This candle, this candle, this can all five of these candles had the exact same low. But what you'll notice is this candle did have good volume. Would you guys agree? Relatively speaking, I mean, it wasn't the greatest bearish vo bullish volume, but it was more volume than any other bearish volume that had existed since this candle. So it was more bullish volume than any other volume bar since that bearish candle. And then the very next candle that comes in, you had less bearish volume. And then the very next candle, closed above and broke above that candle and that's where we got in bullish on that fade so we got in bullish right around here with the stop so you know somewhere down there and we got out and that was you know it wasn't a great trade but a good 0.7 r's nothing to sneeze at vin man says why do you use the three minute chart i like the three minute chart because it's faster than the five but slower than the one and two that's really it <laughs> Falco says 0.7 hours a day keeps the day job away that's right so does anyone else have any questions about volume on like just a swing trade level um i do have a video about exhaustion volume out there on the internet if you want to check that one out i'll make sure i link to it below uh, I think it's called What is Exhaustion Volume? I talk a little bit about, I didn't spell exhaustion right, I don't think. I'm missing an S somewhere. Videos. Real life trading. Why can't I find, I guess I should just spell it right. Exhaustion You ever spell something so bad that Google is like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. All right. So here's the video on exhaustion volume. This one's a good video too, just just describing and hey, talking trainers, about bro. um you know the big 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 volume spikes that come in kind of like this right here. You know when this 
massive gap happens and this huge, huge, huge volume comes in, I'm looking at all, all, automatically a fade. Definitely looking at going against the grain. Um, trying to think, let's go look at Apple. And I know you all know how bullish I've been on Apple recently. And we could talk about it. So first and foremost, this volume, this day right here, this is when it started, by the way. This was the exact low of Apple, like 142 on the button. So this volume, let's just talk about it for a second. Is that a lot of bearish volume, yes or no? Yeah, it's a lot of bearish volume, tons. Big, strong, bearish gap down. Um, Apple was down on that day 10%. In a day. So one of its biggest non-earnings gaps in history. And I was not shorting. In fact, I was closing all of my puts and looking at going long. Because that was also the 200 simple moving average on the weekly. So there's a lot of reasons to be bullish. But even if you didn't go bullish there, that's irrelevant. I don't care. I didn't, I didn't go bullish there, so it doesn't matter. This candle, though. What's important about that candle? Very next day, right, you had huge bearish volume, gap down, everyone's bearish, and then boom, it closes above the bearish volume, trapping everybody. And then the next candle, it's a bearish candle with lower bearish volume. And then the next day, another gap and go. It gapped again above the high of that candle. I've been bullish on Apple since that candle. And then when this gap comes in, I mean, come on. And that's your bullish gap and go. Look at the volume that came in on that beast. Totally massively engulfing all of that previous bearish volume. So everybody's trapped. Um, let's go look at a trade that I'm losing on right now and see if I can help figure out the volume. I, I really can't, though. That's the funny part. I've already tried to look at it. So OLLI, this is a bearish trade that we're in. Um, you know, you had a nice little bearish sell off volume was, you know, volume was good. You had a bullish candle, upper shadow volume was, you know, volume came in. You had another bearish candle. You had another bullish candle that came in and then that's where we got in. We got in bearish below that candle right here. And then the volume increased on the 15th volume decreased on the 18th. Volume increased again on the 19th. And these two days, volume is going down. So the thing is, if this stock goes higher and traps me, all of those bears are also going to be trapped, and Ollie's outlet is probably going to go back up to 90, most likely. And I'll get stopped out, and I'll cry, but, you know, it'll be like a manly cry. One of those cries are like, yeah, he's sad, but, you know, he's still a man. <laughs> like the like the one arm tear wipe just one single tear it's like a little bit of a cry but you wipe it with your arm and that's it but people know you just cried one of those things here's c-r-e-e -E. and this again had really really good volume these two days you had a wicked pair of candle super small volume on the next day massive bearish volume on this day and it looks like we might close above the bearish volume today and if that happens i'm just assuming this trade is going to continue acb right the reason a lot of people are still in acb is the volume just looks great on all time frames weekly chart i mean look how much bullish volume that is tons of bullish volume in the weekly tons of bullish volume in the daily bull 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 so I'm just kind of waiting for a little bit of a retest and then hopefully again this is the part where it either trades down and bounces and continues higher or it doesn't but it's one of those things where you got to hold a big winner at some point. Any last minute questions, ladies and gentlemen, about volume? We covered, believe it or not, intraday volume on futures and on stock. We also covered swing trade volume, looking at it on the daily chart. This stuff works on hourlies as well, of course. You know, here's hourly chart. So all of this works on an hourly time frame as well. So you're looking at something like this, 
And, you know, again, you see really nice. Doesn't this candle look like the very first candle I started talking about in the very beginning of the show, the very beginning of this video? Bullish, high wave, indecision candle with good volume. Now, you could have taken that exact same trade here and you would have lost. And then you'd have tried it again and you would have won. Donna says, will this be recording be posted on YouTube? Yes, of course. Yep, yep, yep. Well, team, beautiful stuff. I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click that beautiful red subscribe button if you are on the YouTube channel. Be sure to hop over to reallifetrading.com. Check out all of our cool videos, articles, all kinds of great content, tons of wonderful information. And if you liked this and you would like to hear me talk for six more hours about trading, one of my most underrated classes is the Back Trading Marathon, where I do six hours straight. And we had about 20 traders complete this Back Trading Marathon with me. It's pretty much doing what we did today, but for six hours straight. Really great course. Feel free to check it out, try it out. I donate all proceeds to charity. All right, folks, that is it. Thanks so much for tuning in. You rock, and until next time, love life, live life, and trade it. Bye.